welcome to another free Willis webisode. I hope you're all well. Today I'm bringing you something a bit different just because I haven't been doing tutorials per se. Um, I don't know, I don't feel like I'm bringing anything new to the table at this point in terms of applying eyeshadows, although I really love to show you how things work on me, how I introduce very colourful things in my day-to-day -day life of a normal person that is not an influencer. But still, I haven't been doing much of that. But today it's a bit different. It has to do with foundation and coverage and skin. So uh, basically I've been doing lasers to take care of my melasma. I usually do pico laser and this time uh, we decided to go with a different one. It's called a BBL, uh, not a Brazilian butt lift. It's called a broadband light treatment. With the BBL, basically what happened was I didn't have that kind of few days of just my skin feeling irritated or anything. Just after a few hours of, after doing the BBL, I already had that kind of very scab looking spotted face in a way. Um, and just, I did this on Friday and on Sunday, late Sunday uh, and yesterday, mostly Monday, uh, I started to feel my skin starting to flake, which means that it's, the cells are turning uh, and uh, everything is going to come off. So it was a different process, but I was still, I had a few, uh, I went to the movies and I had a few social appointments, interactions and also had to go to work. So I felt like covering that and I dug into my kind of technique file and I dabbled with that kind of technique with some products that are more recent uh, in my collection, not in the world. And I actually think I achieved a very good result. So I decided to share with you what I did. The only thing you should keep in mind, I think I mentioned this when I show you the application, is that these are not raised in any way. I have some texture, be texture because of the flakiness that is starting to happen, the dryness. But I only have my skin moisturized with my SPF as usual and the bumps that you see or the spots that you see are not raised, although they do look like they would be textured. They are not. They're just flat on the skin, kind of under the skin. Uh, so it's something that when you apply color on top and you can really cancel it out, it looks seamless in terms of texture. This, in my opinion, this technique also works for uh, bumps on the skin, something like acne and stuff like that. But keep in mind that when the light hits it in different angles, you will always see the texture. You can't do much about that except for, you know, mattifying in the end. But yeah, I was so satisfied with this technique and it was really quick because there are several techniques that I've used throughout the years and that I've tried and amazing makeup artists that share those amazing techniques. I've tried them. And most of them take so long to do that it's not feasible for an everyday life where you have to leave for work. So for me, this is a pretty quick and easy way to achieve this kind of coverage that looks kind of natural, you know? It's a good balance in my opinion. And also the products that I used I mentioned this at the end of the video also, but these last me the whole day. So I don't have to worry about things starting to melt melt off or look weird or cakey or kind of pilling in any way, except for actual pilling of the skin. I can't do anything about that. But yeah, it's it, it stays. It stays and it's, it keeps itself in place. So I don't have to worry about anything other than once in a while going into my lines and patting them back in from any creases, which I do with any kind of makeup already. So with this long intro done, if you're interested in seeing how I went from this to this, just keep on watching and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all those things. So now let's roll the tape. 
Okay, so first of all, let's assess the situation. As you can see, this is far better than it was a few days ago, but I have several of these really, really dark brown spots that are coming to the surface of the skin. They're becoming a bit textured and flaky, and they show through, especially this one here, they do show through, um, any kind of less high coverage makeup that I do. So that's what I'm going to try to address. And as you can see, they they are so scattered that doing, you know, pinpoint concealing would take me a whole day. Uh, so for me, that's not doable on a daily basis. So here's my friendly Danessa Myrick's little... This will sound like kind of a Danessa Myrick sponsored video. It is not. Sadly, I love her products. You can send me all the products that you want, Danessa, but that's not what's happening today. So the main thing that I wanted to do was kind of brighten slightly this um, the browner spots here, and um, for that I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Vision Cream Cover Foundation from the Danessa Myricks, and they have these mini sizes available for purchase. So. It makes it super affordable to try out this foundation. This is kind of an oil-based foundation, which is not something that you see very often. It has very high coverage, and it has its good and bad things, like any foundation. But yeah, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take... They have some, um, I'd say, color-correcting colors that you can mix with your foundation, stuff like that. And I have one in TY02, the Y is for yellow, and this is a very light yellow color. So the first thing that I'm going to do, these come with a little doe foot applicator, and I'm going to apply the yellow very lightly because, as I said, this is very pigmented, and I want a thin layer of this directly on my darker areas, including uh, this in a corner of the eye, and as you can see, there are no triangles here, nothing like that. And I'm just gonna scatter a few of these uh, bits around here, and I'm gonna blend them out afterwards. I'm not gonna be too uh, crazy about it because this is very bright. Some people would say maybe the light purple would be good for this, a light purple color corrector. I prefer to use this light yellow on my skin tone, uh, but it's I'm going to do that on also the areas where I have a bit more redness. And you did need the tiniest amount because this just, this goes on. And I'm going to take just a concealer brush. This one is by Zoeva. And I'm going to blend it out. And because my skin is flaking, I am not, you know, rubbing this. I'm kind of like patting in and spreading just the tiniest bit. And you can see the yellow is very pale and it's brightening um, my darker spots. Put my mirror here. These are little tiny fleckies, uh, brown fleckies, which is so annoying. But yeah, you can go with a, a color corrector and just pinpoint correct each thing. But for me, that takes so long. There are so many things to color right now that I'm just going to be more lazy. It will give me higher coverage, maybe a bit more noticeable in terms of noticing there's foundation on your skin, but I am okay with that for these days. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm just doing right now. These, This foundation, uh, you can mix it with oil. I have her oil and it becomes, you know, a very beautiful emollient, um, more medium to light coverage depending on the amount of oil that you mix foundation but as you can see it has brightened underneath my eye very well and you can still see my skin underneath so if you apply a very small amount um, it's not 
thick coverage of the bat. I'm going in with my fingers where I feel the brush is not doing what I want. And this is the first layer. And now I'm going to go with my color, uh, which is N4.5, um, the Vision Cream Color Foundation. It is a really good color match. Maybe it's a tad too, uh, a tinsy bit too dark for me, but I can add a touch of the yellow and mix it if I want to and just brighten it that way. And the main thing about this is finding something that really matches your skin tone so that you can just apply the coverage where you need it and not everywhere else. In this case, I have so many little areas that I'll end up applying basically all over, but in areas where I don't want to apply coverage, as in with my forehead, I can skip uh, doing so. So I'm just applying with my fingers, and if you've been here from <laughs> almost a decade, I've done a video where I share the technique that I saw some movie makeup artists do on myself uh, on set. And they didn't use sponges, they didn't use brushes, they just used their clean fingers and they just applied the product directly. And they used very creamy foundations. I think I used the Clinique, um, the one in the big jar bottle, the one in the big glass bottle um, that has the doe foot applicator. I really love that foundation. Finding a match is really complicated so I've given up on it but it's still a really good foundation if, if you can find your match off the bat and what they did was what I'm doing right now just patting very gentle patting motions using your finger almost as if it were a sponge or the sponge a makeup sponge but the warmth of the finger helps to blend things a bit easier onto the skin and then when there's nothing left on my finger I'm going over to the edges of the foundation and blending those off. So you can see I'm focusing most of my coverage here and on the areas where I don't need it I'm just picking up some of the foundation and bringing it and spreading it right on, on the areas where I hardly need any coverage just to have the same color all, all over my face. But I'm leaving this area here quite well covered and you can see the difference already, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. This is a great foundation. And because it is oil-based and it's a more creamy foundation, this stays um, more elastic on the skin. Like, I really like, for instance, the Jouer Very High Coverage Foundation. Everybody knows that one, I think. Not many people use it still. But that one, it has a matte finish in and of itself. So, here it is, you can see on that little very dark spot, it's gone. Um, I really love that foundation. It has a very matte finish. So during the day, if you have these more dehydrated areas where things are starting to flake off, which is common both for people with dry skin, if you are dealing with any kind of dehydration, in my case is due to the, uh, to the laser beams, <laughs> um, that will start to look pretty heavy throughout the day. And this one, I don't have that problem. It stays more emollient. As I said, this mixed with an oil, you've seen me apply this uh, with an oil when I first tried the Danessa Myrick stuff that I got. And it works beautifully. It creates a beautiful, pretty juicy um, skin. But if you can see, even on just moisturized skin, uh, which is not naturally dry, which is mine, uh, the foundation itself is not too um, oily, as in oil-based would uh, trigger in our minds. 
So I'm just picking up little bits of the product and applying around the edges, anywhere I may have some redness or something like that. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm, I'm going in with my uh, color foundation on my under eyes just to balance out that yellow because it was really bright and I just wanted to look as natural as possible. I know this doesn't have lots of super interesting techniques or anything very innovative, very TikTokable, um, very clickbaity even, but I think if you have texture on your skin, this is a great way to go and lots of darkness also because your finger just molds to whatever area of your face and can just go right in there you know without dragging or taking out lots of coverage or without looking um streaky from the brush strokes some people just can make absolute magic with a brush. Uh, but I honestly, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I still prefer my fingers. So yeah, I'm not gonna go, I'm just gonna apply a little bit here because there's some redness, but I'm not gonna go over my nose so you will still be able to see the pores. I applied a very thin amount um, I'm just basically taking little nibs of product from where there's hardly any and that's what I'm using right now. So um, I applied a very thin layer on my chin so you can still see the texture and color on my chin. I'm not going to apply anything on my forehead since I don't need it and if you have large patches of skin you can always do that. It, it looks more natural in my opinion of course uh, but yeah. Of course, if there's bumps, um, that kind of texture, it will still be noticeable. But I think, honestly, that the fact that it's all even and one color helps so much. And it took me, I've been recording for 14 minutes, so it took me about 10 minutes to do this with just my fingers. Uh, as I said, a very thin layer of a brightening color, like this yellow, and then my match uh, and as you can see so much foundation <laughs> is left over because you don't need much just go in on the areas where you really need it and just do that don't go overboard and leave as many exposed areas as you can without looking patchy especially because as i said the color matching the shade matching is super important for this to kind of deceive the eye to this extent. I'm going to lower my ISO a bit and get really close. So this is just the foundation on my skin right now and as you can see in terms of finish it looks really beautiful, it looks luminous without looking oily, it just looks like you've just moisturized your skin and it's fine. Um, and to the touch, th this is the only drawback, to the touch, th this feels slightly tacky. The foundation itself will not budge, even if you don't powder it. It will not budge throughout the day. It will transfer, but it won't move or look weird or melt off. That's not going to happen. But uh, because I don't like this stickiness to the touch, I'm going to apply a little bit of powder. This is just a loose powder I'm trying to use up. It's the one from KVD. Not the biggest fan of this powder, to be honest. So I'm going to saturate my brush, but then I'm going to pat off most of the excess. And I'm going to press this without dragging so that it doesn't have the opportunity to clump with the foundation underneath. I wish I had my color match uh, in this powder. I don't. I ordered one online and it wasn't my it wasn't my colour for the for the winter time. It's too dark. 
uh, because Denise Myrick's powder is amazing and super blurring. And I would say this is, for me, the best technique, especially when you've applied quite a good amount of product in some areas. It is the best technique to pat and just maybe slightly press and roll, but never, you know, do big motions so you don't start to cuddle up your concealer foundation, whatever it is. For me, this is what works best. And it is set. I still feel a bit, a slight bit of tackiness on this area here where I put my fingers very often. So that's where I'm going to uh, focus a bit more powder just for the comfort of it. I don't need this. It's just to feel comfortable uh, with the product. Yeah, now it feels, now it feels nice. And I just like to do this on this lower area here which is where I touch more often. I'm leaving the, the most covered area less powdered, if that makes sense. So now, because I'm just with what's left on the brush, go close to the eyes, but not under the eyes. I prefer to dab off any kind of creasing that may occur throughout the day then have this area very cakey and that's it this is this is my complexion done I can go in with a bit of you know blush or um, highlighter whatever you'd like I'm gonna go in with my Danessa Myrick's uh, my dream cheek trio I'm barely touching my skin As you can see, it's there, it's, it's, it's looking dewy. It's enough, it's enough. If you swirl too much your, your brush uh, and too much powder on your skin, it may start to look kind of curdled. So I go with very thin layers. I'm using the blusher right now. And I'm just patting it on. Again, just being careful not to disrupt the product underneath. I'm not too interested right now in having lots of blusher or anything. I just want to have my skin concealed. I'm going with a powder highlighter. Very subtle. I'm perfectly fine with that and that's where I would leave my complexion last step just using a glycerin based kind of setting spray not those very alcoholic setting sprays that make your makeup last longer but one that kind of melts down the powders this is MAC fix plus so there you go I'm just gonna let it set and my complexion is done I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back so this is it, this is the finished look. Um, I think that comparing to where we started, it looks a lot better. Um, and it doesn't look very heavy or cakey, you know? It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It doesn't feel drying or that your skin is going to start to pull on itself throughout the day. It's gonna be very comfortable throughout the whole day. It's not gonna feel, at least on my skin, very oily either or like something is falling off it's pretty sturdy and it stays where it where you want it to be until you wash it off so it is something that I can trust to apply in the morning and still be there at the end of the day without many disruptions or anything maybe a bit of creasing around my lines but that happens with any foundation there's nothing too specific to this kind of technique and this kind of coverage that doesn't happen with other types of foundations or other types of techniques so that's why I wanted to get the skin for me it looks as natural and creamy and hydrated without feeling oily or looking oily so I'm on that perfect balance without losing the coverage that I felt I wanted for today basically um, yeah and if I think of how long it took me and I've done this several days now uh, in a row, ever since I tried this technique and it really worked. I can say I can do just the face, the coverage in about 
seven to 10 minutes and everything else is optional, you know, blusher, eye makeup, that kind of stuff. You can take the time that you want, but for my foundation with this technique, it takes me about 10 minutes. So it's really quick. Uh, uh, it's not as time consuming as you think it would take, but it's not just slapping, you know, some high coverage foundation and just patting it onto your face and good to go. That's not how I roll because I think that kind of technique absolutely valid. Some people love the look, but for me, it doesn't look as natural as this. So for me, this is where I want it to be. Also, one final tip. This is very um, well known, but um, at the end, I usually go in either with a Q-tip or something and I remove any leftover makeup if I notice I have any leftover foundation on my beauty marks. Some people go over it with a freckle pencil or your brow pencil will, will do and just stamp back your um, beauty marks if you need because if they're really covered, it's a bit difficult to remove the foundation. It's easier to go in with something on top. But for me, I just do this and the the beauty mark is exposed. So it is another way to uh, ensure that this deceives the eye as much as possible into thinking that it's your bare skin underneath, which is not, it's not. <laughs> so if this has been in any way, shape or form helpful for you or at least entertaining, please leave me a like and comment down below. And also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you here every single week or whenever I post. <laughs> and as usual and as always, thank you for spending your time on me and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.